Okay, welcome back to my channel. I'm not quite centered. Let me fix that. Okay, I'm JDS Sport Talks video. This one's really gonna be about um, West Coast Eagles and our game on the weekend. I'm gonna sprinkle just a bit of Fremantle and maybe other things that come to my mind during the video, just so I can have my normal thumbnail set up and multiple things in the title. Really, the main focus of this will be almost purely on the Eagles and our game against the North Melbourne Kangaroos. Um, well, really, even though the Roos won, the game is... <laughs> it's... didn't look good for North Melbourne. I just noticed that it's very bright coming from the right. I can turn it on and fix that. Yeah, it didn't look good for North Melbourne in terms of... Not that I thought they were going to lose, even though there were times where the fact they, there was a chance for the Eagles to win which is ridiculous considering we had, what, four players who aren't even registered to an AFL club playing for us. But it's not a good look that you can't even beat a team that was tipped to go down when they got ninth last season. So no one thought they were going to get better. Well, everyone thought he was going to get worse this year, not better, or maybe that's say about the same. And then they lose practically their whole squad, need to get players from who aren't even in the AFL to play for them. Literally someone on the elevator that used to play for Fremantle. No, so used to play for the Roos, which was at the game to watch. We literally grabbed them in the elevator and said, we need someone because there was Nelson couldn't play because he hurt himself in the warm-up. Like it was literally, we grabbed someone off an elevator, chucked him in a shirt and said, you're on. And that's how desperate we are for players. It's ridiculous. And the fact that we even, like Darling didn't somehow, fuck knows, miss that shot. I don't know how it gets that shot. I, just, I don't say about Darling. I mean, I didn't expect him to do that well, considering he's not been in any team environment really, except for the last like what half week, week before that game. But you got to do better than that. Like if you're getting the shot, you got to do better than that. Still, you have to present more. I guess yes. Like he must do something weird. Like I haven't really looked too much into it, but he. There must be something weird about the way he leads because he gets a lot of kicks over his head at his feet or not to his advantage. So he must do something a bit unusual in his lead for kicks to go to Kennedy or Rioli where you want them, out of here, to your advantage. For him, back here, down here, or to the advantage of your opponent. He must do something unusual to cause that to happen because it doesn't make sense that it keeps happening to him, no one else. But then that shot, like if he kicked that shot, we genuinely had a chance. We were what? I think we we were only a goal down at that point. We were right back in that game with players that aren't even in our squad playing for us. And we were right in that game until he missed that shot. Once he missed that shot, you could tell the momentum. Like, if we still kept the momentum a little bit, but you could tell, like it went straight back down there and after that, that was like, that miss, that miss, release the pressure. They were stuck in our forward line for a long time at that point, and we missed that shot, and they got down the end. And the, as I said, we kept the control a little bit, like we got it back down our end, but nothing really happened from it after that. And then they got a goal, and then just got another one, another two, I think. And obviously got the 15 point win or whatever it was, 20. I don't actually remember at all. But um, we were right in that game until that moment. That sort of was the little thing that shifted it back. North Melbourne's, which it should have been heavily in North Melbourne's favour anyway, really. But um, I thought, overall though, even though Ryan missed four out of four shots, getting four behinds, no goals, he still had a presence, he still, like, we still fought. Yes, there were definitely things we could have done better, but what do you expect when you're playing four players who aren't even in the squad, and players who are coming back from injury or COVID, or haven't been in the team, so, uh, if I can like, haven't been in a team environment for like four months. Um, so you're gonna have dodgy performances from those guys coming back, even though they are the experienced players. Yes, you'd hope more of them probably would lift, but I think even then, like we fought, and as I said last round, that is our main problem last season. We laid down and took a beating. We didn't fight, especially the last half of the season. The first half we were okay. The second half of the season, we would just lay down and take the beating. This year we're actually fighting, which is that's that is a positive for me. I didn't expect too much this season. I expected us to be what ninth to twelfth, tenth to twelfth, somewhere around there. No better. Trying. I think we were. 
I thought we were going to play better as in to our potential than we did last year, but I thought we were going to be a worse team, if that makes sense. So I think the ability of the team is a bit worse this year, but I don't think we played to our potential last year. So we ended up about 10 spot, I think we should end up this year, barring obviously with this COVID shit messing everything up. Um, but yeah, the fact that we were really in that game at all is a positive. Um, I heard a few people say bad things about Jamieson or Jamieson, whatever you say his name, the tall, I think it was 33 or something as well, the tall blonde hair guy in defence. I thought he did well. He is, yes, he's a bit unco, but he is a young, big guy, and he is one of the, like, the least wanted to be pit people in our list, which you expect him to not be up to the level. Um, nothing against him in saying that, by the way. Or anyone who's low down on an AFL team's lift. If you're even considered at all for an AFL team, you're a bloody good player. But like a perfect situation where he did well in a bad situation when it was kicked from I think Hearn or was it McGovern over his head and he was the last man in defence. And he did well to, I think we still conceded, but he did well to give us a chance to even not concede in that situation. Like I think there were a lot of players where people overreacted about, especially the players who were coming in, like these guys aren't, shouldn't be playing in the AFL really, except for maybe Black, he probably is good enough. Um, but yeah, I think the players that we brought in did well, most of them. I wasn't a fan of how Witherton, uh, Witherton sorry, and um, Ainsworth, who I didn't understand why they got dropped in the first place, now I kind of see it in the way he played. Like, Witherton was just, they were talking about the complex actually, he takes the stupid kick, he just never did fun stupid the dangerous kick too often without the skills to complete it. So even if he had the skills, it's probably still taking that kick too often and he doesn't have the skills to complete it, which means it's just going to end up in problems like we had and I think it was the third where he took a kick to... I think it was Ryan... Or... Actually no, it was Luke Foley and it was over his head, he got one hand to it but someone could just tap it out of his hand and move on and kick the goal from it. Like, these are kicks that didn't need to be taken, he could have just launched along like he did so many other times in the game. But it's just silly decisions, me and play like him just aren't really up to it and that's why they either dropped or kicked out the team, like Ainsworth was. I don't actually remember if Witherton is an actual player or if he is an ex-player that we brought back because of the situation we are in. But um, like we had, we had lots of good performances really, I've been talking about lots, all the negatives at the moment. But like we had McGovern, that's the best McGovern we've seen probably since the Premiership. Like that was the McGovern that won us the Premiership, not won us, but was a major part of winning the Premiership. He was able to dominate, I know it's only Kangaroos, but he was able to just dominate the opposing offence, carve every ball, he was everywhere. That's the McGovern that we all grew to love four years ago. And then we had Willie Rioli coming back, kicking, I don't know how many, he had, I think he had eight score involvements, four of them goals, um, the rest of them assists, I, I think he was 4-0, and oh, maybe 4-1, might have been 4-1 and one in the game. And then there was, um, I can't remember his first name, but his name is Black. He is actually the set of a medalist, which is the waffle equivalent of the Brownlow waffle being West Australian Football League, um, which is thanks to the BFL, if you didn't know, which I assume you would know. Um, but yeah, so he played well, he, did, he just really did his job, didn't try and do too much, did what he needed, and scored his first ever AFL goal, I'm probably only ever assuming, actually probably played for him against Ross, he might have scored more. But, Potentially his only ever AFL goal, which, I mean, congrats to him, he fully deserves everything, all the praise he got, and I don't see why a team hasn't picked him up considering the consistent high level he has played in the waffle. And there was one other person that I saw that played really well, but I can't remember the name or the stats for him. I think overall it was a good performance, as I said, we fought hard, that's what I really expected, just to fight a bit, and we, we almost won that game, we weren't that far off winning that. So I couldn't have really asked anymore. I know I've had to complain about a few things, but there's always things you can improve, and as long as you don't completely neglect the positives, you should always bring up the negatives of a situation or a game or whatever you're talking about. Um, what else did they talk about? I'll get to Buddy in a second. But um, Fremantle, collapsing in the third, losing the St Kilda, so I'm going to say about that. They aren't as good as people making that to be. I know they've got a few players down as well, but it's nothing like the Eagles at the moment. And if they get into a situation like us and they play like that, in like they did in the third, if they have lapses like they had in the first two games, it's not going to go how they think this season. Um, and they are capable, not quite, I reckon they're a bit over ambitious a little bit, but they're capable of a lot of what they think they are. 
like they have a better squad than we probably. I would say at peak we have a better squad still, but a lot of our players are well over their peak. Um, but all that matters is current. Peak means nothing. And the Fremantle squad currently should should easily beat us this weekend, and should be beating St Kilda's current form. And who was the first game? I can't remember who the first game is anymore. Should be beat. Sh I don't know. They should have won that from what I saw. Uh, actually, they did win, didn't they? So they did win. They beat Adelaide, but it was by one point. So that's what I was talking about. They should have beaten them by more than one point. That was way too close. They did beat them. That's right. Um, but yeah, they should really be doing far better than that. And just to get to Buddy, I mean, I just want to. There's not really much else to say. Um, on par almost with Gary Abbott level play. Always was. It's just the thousand goals really just seals that legacy. Um, on par with all the greats of the game. Ablett Jr, Ablett Senior, Wayne, Kerry, bloody um, Matthews, I can't think of people's names, the Hawthorne guy that got punched in the ribs and broke his ribs before the game even started, um, you know all the greats, he is on par with them, you can't really deny it, now obviously the guys who have scored the goals, um, Plugger, who were the other five, fuck now, Plugger, the guy who, that's Plugger as well, I can't think of the names. All the greats, he is up there now, there's no real denying it. I think there wasn't really much anyway, but that really just seals it. Just congratulations to Buddy. Um, no more to say. It was an amazing, amazing day. Just watching all those people just run out and swarm around him. The video of the um, drone shot from above is just absolutely insane. I don't know how it wasn't spoken more worldwide. Like that is one of the greatest sporting moments even when I care about footy, you see it, something like that. That is the most surreal sporting moment you can ever have. An entire stadium, 70,000 people, to have easily more people. The entire field really completely covered with people. All because someone kicked the goal. Right, that is just an insanely surreal moment in sport. And it, even though Australia is given what it deserves, I think worldwide it's not even given the credit it deserves. Um, I thought like there has been some cups like you saw there was like a online like um, BBC news thing but I feel like there should have been more like that is insane stuff like you get obviously Super Bowl is a bigger sport but it is still only played in America and just when Super Bowl happens everyone sees it um, it's just an amazing achievement congratulations buddy nothing else to say it's been JDS see ya.